it was a Sunday morning when I visited a local pet shop, took home a little basket, and pleasantly surprised my daughter. Handing her the basket, I said, this is the gift that I always wanted to give you. She opened the basket and joyfully jumped when she noticed a small white puppy waiting to play with her. The puppy was just 30 days old. My daughter took her in her hands with great joy and named her Vishka. And soon, Vishka became an integral part of our family. We started enjoying her white furs lying on our sofa, that restless run after a bath, that pungent smell of her food, and her vaccination schedule. May it be restaurants, parks, social gatherings, or long drives. We took Vishka with us wherever we went. She had gone to shopping with us. I vividly remember the day when we had checked into a hotel where pets were prohibited. And still, somehow, I convinced the manager to let Vishka stay in our room. We promised him that we will clean the mattress or the floor if Vishka spoils it. We had become so emotionally attached to Vishka that we could not imagine our lives without her. But then, something unusual happened. One fine morning, when my wife tried to greet Vishka with a gentle touch on her back, she reacted furiously. She grabbed my wife's nose and penetrated her small but sharp teeth into her nostrils. We all were shocked to see such violent and unexpected behavior of Vishka. But then she suddenly started wagging her tail vigorously and licking my wife's face. Though silent, her sorry was loud and clear. We forgot this incident, believing it must have been our mistake in handling her. But gradually, her biting episodes started increasing. Her mild but unpredictable owner biting attacks with different family members continued repeatedly, followed by guilt, apology, and rebound love as a compensation for that mistake. But one day, Vishka scared us. That weekend, she had gone to a nearby city with my parents. While returning, my mother offered some food to Vishka in the car, believing she must be hungry. When Vishka no longer seemed to eat that food, my mother reached to that unattended food to pick it up. Just in time, Vishka grabbed my mother's hand between her teeth and bit her badly, leaving her wounded. My mother was in severe pain and agony. As she was taking an antiplatelet drug, it was challenging for my father to stop the bleeding. They were in the middle of a highway with no medical help. They tried multiple things, and after some time, with great difficulty, they could arrest the bleeding. But when I learned about this incident, I was shaken with guilt, sadness, and fear. I started introspecting if my decision to own a pet was right or not. To affirm my decision, I contacted a certified dog trainer. He listened to my entire story with a faint smile as if he knew what I was talking about. And after a long pause, he told me that Vishka was suffering from behavioral disorders such as fear-related aggression and resource guarding. 
He also said that if a pet starts biting the owner repeatedly, reversing or treating that behavior of a pet is challenging. I was alarmed. Empathetically, I asked, then what is the future of such pets? And what should we do about Vishka? And he said, you have to send her away. You should not keep such dangerous pets inside your house. And I was stunned. I couldn't believe how could such a cute, innocent, loyal animal be dangerous. From his understanding, the apparent reason for Vishka's impulsive owner biting was fear and insecurity. <laughs> but then, there was no reason for Vishka to feel insecure or fearful. We never threshed, threatened, or punished her. Then what was the core reason responsible for Vishka's abnormal behavior? Whatever reason it could be, with each passing day, Vishka's abnormal behavior was surging. So despite all the love and attachment we had towards her, we finally had to send her away to a rehab center. When she got into the car with us, she was completely unaware that she was leaving us forever. And a part of us was also living with her forever. That night, I couldn't sleep. I was heartbroken and engulfed with guilt, regret, and betrayal. Visuals of Vishka's memories haunted me all the night. But then, who is responsible for this emotional trauma? Whether I made the wrong move of bringing Vishka home or whether Vishka was undeserving of all the love and care that she got. This question led me to the discovery that I was totally unprepared for and that's why I am here. There is a large amount of illegal trade of pets happening in the form of puppy mills. A puppy mill is a commercial dog breeding activity characterized by quick breeding, pathetic living conditions, and poor scientific knowledge. When I researched more about it, I found that one should always ask or check for a pedigree certificate before buying a puppy. A pedigree shows a pet's ancestry and proves that the dog was bred scientifically. I learned that we should always buy pets from licensed breeders. <laughs> but the shocking fact is that there are more than one lakh pet shops and breeders in India, and out of them, only 500 odd are registered. Rest all are puppy mills. And the most dangerous practice a puppy mill follows is inbreeding, that is mating between the two dogs of the same family having the same genes. Inbreeding increases the risk of hereditary diseases and is hazardous for a pet's health. Concurrently, the second most perilous practice that a puppy mill follows is poor socialization, that is, early separation of puppies from their mother. Ideally, a puppy should be allowed to be with her mother for at least 8 to 10 weeks after the birth. It is during this time a puppy learns canine behavior from her mother and siblings. A puppy feels secure and confident about the outside world in her mother's company. Separating a puppy before eight weeks may lead to behavioral problems in a pet. 
and unfortunately vishka was just 30 days old when the breeder sold her to us so it is perfectly understandable why vishka behaved the way she did her fear insecurity and suspicion about the outside world were justified her hostility and aggression towards us was a behavioral flaw that she herself was unaware of we fail to understand that we can't hold animals responsible for misbehavior if we humans are genetically socially and emotionally manipulating them just for our own benefit we learn two lessons from this entire incident one it is not only the breeder who is responsible for this illegal pet trade an ignorant consumer like me is equally responsible who is willing to buy puppies and pets from unauthorized breeders just because it is cheaper and two no matter how much attached we are to a loved one if there is threat to our physical mental or emotional health we need to make our boundaries clear and protect our peace of mind only two questions in the end do we really need pets and if yes can we prevent this bilateral emotional trauma thank you so much